first let's go to our closure script repository and create a new branch called three next let's go to the CLGS Ajax github repository and quickly go through the description as you can see this is a simple Ajax client for closure and closure script it is basically a wrapper around the google.net xhrio or the xml http request library so on the usage section we can see that we have to copy this vector and we have to go to the shadow CLJS and on the dependency section let's just paste it and make sure that we have the latest version once that is done we can go ahead and restart our server this will update the dependency install the CLGX Ajax library so that we can use it from our app now that our app is compiled let's connect to our REPL again Okay, now that the CLGX Ajax library is installed, let's go ahead and see how we can use it. So as you can see, this library provides a few helper functions for making the standard HTTP requests. Uh, as you can see over here, uh, it provides get, post, and put helpers. And these functions accept uh, two arguments. Uh, one is mandatory and the other one is an option. The first one is the URI and second is the map of options. So let's go to our JavaScript file and copy the API root constant on line eight. We will take this and copy it in our closure script app. Okay, let's also rename it to uh, to make sure that we are following the closure script convention. So now that we have the URI, let's also look at the, the, the map of options that it accepts. First is the handler function. Now this handler function is for capturing the successful operation. So once we have the articles back from the from the request from the server, we will capture it in the handler function. And this handler function accepts a single parameter, which is the response object sent by the server. And with this handler function, we can save this state so that we can show it to the user. However, if you don't provide the handler function, then the response will be logged in as a, you know, the, it will just get printed on the, on the console, which we will see very, very shortly. Next, let's scroll down and see how we can use this library. So as you can see over here, it exposes ajax.core namespace, and we can refer different operations. In this example, it is referring get and post. So let's copy and paste that in our app.core namespace. Okay, now that we have get and post, let's try to make an API request. So to make an API request, we have to pass, we have we will use the string function that takes the API URI followed by the articles um, slash articles question limit of twenty because we want to show. Let's try to print twenty for now, and as you can see, it concatenates the string, and this is the string that we want to make the get request on. So as you can see, the beauty of REPL is that you can immediately see what you what you execute. It's a great way to experiment with new libraries. So let's go ahead and run this. Okay, so we get a reference error. And this is because I still haven't saved my file. As you can see, there's a blue dot on the core.clgs. Mm. Let's go ahead and save this file and okay so as you can see on the right side as soon as we save the file the the console get populated because the code gets run on line 8 immediately 
So let's go ahead and clear the console and let's try to run this code again. As you can see, we get a successful response and an object containing articles and article count is printed on the console. So there you go. We haven't passed the handler function, that's why it is printing on the, on the console. But what we want next is we want to capture this value and save it somewhere. So in order to do that, let's copy the handler and error handler function and let's pass it as, as an option to our endpoint. So for handler, we'll say handler, and for error handler, all it, it does is it console logs the status and the status text. So that's the error handler, and the handler also console logs the response. And let's create a new function called articles browse. And for now, let's just put everything that we have inside this function. And Let's also format our function. There you go. Now to test this, we will put this inside the comment block so it does not run every time you save the file. Let's clear the console and try to invoke this file again. And as you can see, this is the response that is getting logged. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to declare a state, which will be a reagent atom. And what we want to do is we want to save this response inside this article state. And later on, we will use this article state to, to display all the articles. So instead of logging on the handler function, uh, when we get the response, let's reset the article state with the response. And let's also delete what we have before. And to test our article state, if something is there or not, let's try to deref it. And we'll use the REPL to see. As you can see, there's nothing there right now. Let's call the articles browse. So it looks like it has made an HTTP request. If you go to network tab, you will see that the response is 200. Let's just try it again. And let's run it. There you go. So we have a 200 response. And that's the URI, the response where we, where we have all the articles, right? So as you can see now, we have a map containing all the articles. Awesome. This is amazing. So let's just explore what's inside this article state. So as you can see, we have uh, two keywords, sorry, two key value pairs, the articles, which contains an array of articles, as well as the articles count, which counts the number of articles. Now, this will be used when we are performing pagination. For now, we don't really care about it. All we want to do is fetch the articles and display it. But there's a problem with this approach. Right now, our keys are, are in string. But what we want is we want the keys to be in keyword because keyword offers many benefits over strings and it is also the default um, it is the standard to have keywords as keys in maps so how can we achieve this one way to achieve is when we receive the response from the server we can use the CLJ arrow JS the conversion we can convert the um, the JavaScript to closure script with the JS to CLJ function, and we can also say the we can also tell the function to keywordize. That is one way of doing it. The other way, or the way the way how I recommend is to pass another key to the AJAX that is the response format. Now, this response format specifies that you you would like to receive a certain format of data from the server. So we can tell. Uh, CLGS Ajax. Hey CLGS Ajax, I want my keys to be keyworded, not string. So you can use that with this with this um, with this option. So to ensure that we are receiving the the key uh, the keys as keywords, we have to pass response format uh, property, and the value is a JSON response format function call which we will import from the ajax.core namespace.
and this function accepts a single map and in the map we will say keywords to true what this says is that when you get the, res the response back from the from the server make sure that all the keys are keywords perfect now let's go ahead and invoke this function again and dereference our article state and there you go now all the keys are in keywords so now you know how to make http request in ajax core as well as you know how to transform those responses into keywords that's amazing very cool so let's quickly go over what we have so far so before we move on let's quickly go over what we have done so far first we have imported ajax.core namespace and we have referred get and json response format we have defined the api uri as well as the handler and error handler functions as well as we have defined the article state on top and then finally um, we are calling this function articles browse in the comment section so now let's go to our articles page and let's pass the articles that we have gotten from the server as you can see now our component load all the articles this is awesome but what happens if we refresh the page as you can see all the articles disappeared why did this happen this happened because we have our articles browse in the comment tag and we are only invoking it when we want what we want is we want this function to get invoked when the first time the app page loads now there are many ways to do this in closure script i will go ahead and do with the, the simplest approach that is calling this function in the main function now our main function is defined at the bottom and this function runs only once so this is the perfect place to call articles browse because we don't want to refetch this articles over and over again it would be waste of resources there are other ways to achieve this for example using type 2 components but we will look into this approach later on so this function runs only once when the app starts right let's go to the uh, network tab and let's try saving it as you can see it's not making any http request because the main function has already been rendered but what if we try to put this what if we try to call this function in the render method so let's take this articles browse function and let's try calling in the render method and see what happens and let's save our file and immediately you see on the right we have a network request so as you can see every time we are saving it is making an http request so this is the reason why we don't call it in the render function and uh, and call it in the main function. This is because in the render function we have this dev after load meta tag. So what this meta tag does is that every time you save a file, it it re-renders and it is calling that articles browse function over and over again.